It's been one year since I quit my career in TV news. This video is for anybody who might be considering a career change or thinking about getting into television. This is going to be a long one because I'm going to talk about the whole career and how I ended up getting um, out of it. I've said in previous videos that I consume about nine hours of YouTube a day. You don't have to sit here and watch me. The way I do that is I just listen to stuff. Uh, I don't intently watch the videos. I just kind of have it on, uh, you know, while I'm working, while I'm driving, while I'm working out, um, any instant like that. And uh, I have, you know, some kind of content playing in my ear. So it's a long video and you don't have to sit here and uh, watch me yap. Uh, just put me in your cup. While you're driving, uh, connect me to your Bluetooth device and just listen that way. Uh, that's the way I consume a lot of uh, valuable content. Not saying this is valuable, but uh, here we go. In 2008, I graduated college and I wouldn't exactly say I shot out of the gate uh, and set the world on fire getting into my career field. I was a communication grad from uh, Virginia Tech. And when I graduated, I, I was uh, almost on a metaphorical uh, victory lap, uh, just kind of partying after college. I moved back home to Altoona uh, from Blacksburg. And uh, yeah, I didn't really uh, start uh, looking around at anything. I was just kind of enjoying my summer. <laughs> and uh, I actually started bartending uh, down at the Trianon. And um, you know, I was doing that, and the news director at WTAJ News in Altoona reached out to me because I had previously done an internship with them, and he said, uh, we have a photographer position open at the station. Uh, you know, my experience in college was basically putting together student films uh, I had held a camera a dozen times. I had worked with some nonlinear editing. Um, WTAJ in 2008 was still tape to tape. So uh, when I went in for my interview, we had a pleasant conversation. And then uh, the news director uh, asked me to go outside and shoot some video. So <laughs> um, he gave me this old DVC Pro camera um, and it had a lot of buttons on it. Uh, I didn't know how to use most of them. And uh, I went out into the parking lot. And I think the scenario was something involving the neighborhood. Uh, and I was supposed to shoot the necessary B-roll uh, to, to kind of fill that story out. I must have been out there for about a half hour. And I think I took four blurry, shaky, off the tripod, out of focus, uh, miscolored, uh, blue um, shots. And, uh, you know, I, I took my footage back in to uh, the station. Uh, I'm not sure how he was going to uh, critique me, uh, but he sat down and looked at it. And uh, I think Later that day or the next day, uh, they offered me the job, despite uh, the uh, the terrible camera work that I had displayed. Um, so lesson number one from this is, um, especially in TV news, if you are trying to get into the industry, uh, attitude is everything. Um, you do not have to be uh, 10 years of experience to, to get into TV. Um, if you have a good attitude, they, they will be willing to train you. Um, this is true in almost every small market. Uh, and I would say in the last decade, it has crept into some of the biggest markets in the country. Uh, they're training people that were coming straight out of college. So, um, WTAJ, 
I'm, I'm living at home. Uh, I got my first job in, in TV and I'm clueless. And uh, I'm doing my best and I try to have a good attitude. And fortunately, there were some wonderful people at that station. Uh, I'll name drop a few, Carolyn Donaldson, John Clay, Ben Manning, Brian Schoenfeld, um, Bill Hallman. They, there was some people that I was responsible for the content of, um, you know, the evening news, the 11 o'clock news. I was a nightside photographer. Uh, those were the people that probably had to tolerate uh, my uh, freshness the most. And uh, they, they were wonderful about it. And they uh, looked after me and uh, forgave all the mistakes I made in those early goings. Um, I remember definitely not having a lot of confidence. Uh, I remember, you know, things not, you know, cropping off people's heads, uh, not pressing record. They call that double punching in the business. Uh, so you don't have an interview that you thought you did. Um, it was, it was very, very, uh, tough. Those, those first, I want to say first year, I didn't have any confidence. And um, what happens when you continue to do something and you practice it and you study some other good people, uh, you know, you, you start to get better, you start to get faster, you start to have uh, more exposure to, to good, talented uh, photography. I think it was John Clay that introduced me to the National Press Photographers Association. He gave me these DVDs from the workshop winners. And, uh, you know, those are the sort of examples you get to follow when you, when you join TV News uh, that if, if you are going to be either a reporter, photographer, or just whatever your line of work is, if you do storytelling, I, I used to give this piece of advice to anybody I hired as a manager, go on to YouTube. The, the National Press Photographers Association has a quarterly clip contest. And if you go to their YouTube and search for that NPPA quarterly clip contest, you can find thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of solid storytelling. Uh, people building characters, using emotion, having an, a narrative, having an arc. And so, you know, when you look at what I do now or what I attempted to do now, when I go out and tell a story, um, when somebody hires me to, to, you know, put their business out there in a meaningful way, um, you know, and a recent example that I, I would say I gleaned my style uh, uh, from the National Press Photographers Association was the, the story I did with uh, Charlie's Tree Service. Uh, Travis had hired me to tag along with them in Bellwood. June 6, 1964, we got married at St. Joseph's Church here in Bellwood. And, you know, that's a story that doesn't exist unless I put some effort into finding an, an, an emotional peg. Um, you know, I, I sort of was getting all the necessary video of them bringing down the trees, but then I also uh, had the opportunity to talk to the homeowners. This one was six foot. That one, how tall would you say those are there, roughly? That's about how tall that was. And so, you know, that's not that's not something that just naturally occurs. You, it, it's not like Travis calls ahead and says, "Hey, we're going to conduct an interview. We're going to schedule you guys to be on camera." That comes from 13 years as a photojournalist, where I went out every single day and I talked to people on the street. Somebody knew uh, your role as a news photographer is going out into the into the world with a story premise and delivering it to a television audience 
under a deadline. So you get a story premise in the morning, it's, it's due on, on the evening news. So if I could say a few things about what that forces you to be, it forces you to be one, efficient. It forces you to be two, observant of the world. Um, you know, the best stories that I've gotten are usually not presented to you. It's not something that's scheduled. It's a lot of times the, the spot news, the, uh, the phone call that says, hey, we think there's something going on here. Can you go check that out? As a, as a photographer, that would be uh, kind of how I stumbled into some of the best moments I've ever put on television. So that's my spiel on National Press Photographers Association. Um, three years of WTAJ, a uh, small market. Uh, I, I last checked, I think they were around 100. And um, I probably don't know too many people there, maybe one maybe one. And, you know, three years, I, I would call that sort of, um, you know, junior high or elementary school. And then after three years being here and gaining that experience, uh, you know, I, I have always wanted to kind of get out of, of the hometown, explore the world, um, meet new people, have some new experiences be completely in a different environment. Uh, you know, I, I kind of joked that I always wanted to be a pirate. And so after three years with WTAJ, I, uh, I pointed the compass as far south as possible. Uh, there, was, there was a producer at the time uh, that had left WTAJ and migrated down to Waterman Broadcasting in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. I remembered his going away party, him saying where he was going. And then about a year to, well, it probably was about two years later because he was probably under a two year contract. My producer, that friend that I knew, um, which is a story that is very common in TV news is uh, one person makes the jump to a market and they are your friend. They are, you know, if you have good relationships with people, lesson number two, uh, you can kind of, if you put a, a decent reel together, um, you know, and, and you're good to people, if, if you stick it out in TV, you can kind of point anywhere on the map and probably get a job. It might not happen right away, but I, I know people that jumped from, you know, tiny markets to middle markets to top tens. Uh, I know people at Network News now um, that started with humble beginnings uh, in, you know, market 160, 170, whatever. And so in 2012, I arrived in Fort Myers, Florida. I really did not plan to be there very long. I really, really had my heart set on New Orleans. And uh, my, my deal with Waterman Broadcasting is uh, I, every time I thought I was jumping uh, markets or going to pursue another opportunity, uh, they presented me with uh, uh, you know, a promotion or another, you know, way for me to increase my pay. <laughs> I started out as a general assignment photographer. I did the wheel of, you know, overnight, uh, mornings, evenings, weekends. I did, you know, stints on all those sort of things. And, you know, again, I wanted to go to New Orleans and Instead, after about nine months of being in water, at Waterman, uh, this opportunity opened up for me to join special projects. The things that I'll say about being in a bigger market, uh, when you're in a small market, you kind of do less, less exciting things. I was just blown away when I got there. We would do a, you know, a live shot 
uh, in one eight hour shift uh, up, up, in, up in Altoona. When I got down there, um, breaking news was insane compared to the way they would cover it here. They cover it like a big market. You know, if there's some brush fire happening, you are sent and you will be live as soon as possible. Um, and, you know, you're going to be putting together content for multiple shows as soon as possible. I remember the first day I was on kind of a bigger breaking thing. I, it was a brush fire because it was brush fire season. And um, I remember, you know, we're setting up the live shot and the producers in my ear. And it's just crazy going from, you know, one producer in your ear uh, checking in with one live crew to somebody going down a list of like five live crews uh, out in the field, checking in, getting mic checks, um, letting them know where they're at, letting, letting them know uh, if we're reshuffling um, anything. You know, those, those are, those feel uh, sort of bigger, uh, bigger things to be a part of. And it was very exciting uh, to go from sort of uh, just the standard, hey, we're putting together a, a story and we'll do a live shot to, to kind of wrap it uh, to, hey, you're on all this breaking news all of a sudden um, and it, you know, we need it to be clean and we need you to set up fast safely and fast um and so it was it was a much more exciting environment um nine months of of being one of the uh the general assignment photographers there was an opportunity to be a special projects photographer and so it was at that exact time that i was talking to a station in miami uh about you know, making the jump over that way. And when you look at special projects at uh, Waterman Broadcasting, and I know this still holds up to this day, um, they, they do outstanding work. They do, um, you know, they win all the awards. They do the best storytelling. They are unbelievably polished, um, you know, lighting, production value, use of drones, use of, um, use of just good writing, good research. Um, and so the special projects unit is, is at Waterman Broadcasting is, is still an elite unit. Uh, and when I was asked to join it at the time, uh, the photographer that kind of tapped me to uh to be his protege was matt apthorpe the franchise and um you know we we had a very exciting start in the special projects unit and i'm gonna have to try, try to summarize years of fun in, in a few short minutes uh but you know dave elias chad oliver jim spiewak um you know some of the people that i was able to work with in that unit uh, Lauren Stillwell, and you know the stories we got to, to put together, the creative freedom we had to experiment with editing, flair, style, uh, special effects, um, the use of lighting. Lighting um, was completely new concept to me. I'd never really lit interviews uh, other than flipping on the top light. So um, you know, trying more like three-point lighting, uh, backlighting, uh, hair lighting, um, you know, those sort of things where you're um, putting together something that has more production value. A lot of local news day-to-day -day is, is kind of turn and burn. Um, you know, it's fast-paced. It's make air, not art. And so in the special projects unit, uh, that, was, that was something that... Um, Compared to jumping to a, a bigger market and continuing to do that kind of breaking news, that seemed um, like something I was more interested in. I also felt like I kind of just got there. So three years 
uh, at WTAJ. Then I make the leap down south. Um, and within a year, I was asked to join the special projects unit. And after I joined the special projects, it was uh, some of the best years of, of TV news I've ever had. Uh, we won countless awards. Uh, we, I was part of some stories that I, I still look at and smile. Um, National Edward R. Murrow, um, you know, just lots, lots of years of feeling proud of what I was doing and um, feeling like, you know, if somebody was watching it at home, it wasn't just white noise. Uh, I felt proud of, of what I was putting out. I also can't tell this story of being in TV news without mentioning that uh, I met my wife at the same station. And, uh, you know, while I was doing all my sort of things, um, we were in a relationship that was growing. Um, and so, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're working at the same station for, for years on end. Uh, I'm, I'm in special projects. Uh, she's a producer. And eventually I was tapped to be the assistant chief um, and, you know, kind of take on more responsibility, be more of a, a, of a team leader and, um, you know, be responsible for that. I think that's, yeah, when I was assistant chief is when we started taking people in other departments, uh, production, they were called production assistants at the time. And we would train them. We would put them under my supervision um, and they would follow me along during the day and I would train them to be a news photographer. Um, they would observe me for a while, um, but it was, you know, shadowing and then real world experience. I would just keep handing them the camera in, in situations and allowing them more freedom and, you know, much like... Um, much like anything else, uh, you can you can spend four years in college. Uh, you can read dozens of books, watch a, a whole bunch of tutorials, but it means absolutely nothing until you've tried it yourself. And so that was our philosophy: was get them get them out there, get them in the field, get them um, doing it themselves. And you know, we uh, there's a, a long list of very, very talented, successful uh, photographers that have started with that model. Late 2016 going into 2017. My wife and I are both um, exploring an opportunity. Uh, we both interviewed at a station in Washington, D.C. We can be... Uh, in a big pond as small fish. Um, but at the same time, we were also offered to stay and uh, me become the chief photographer in charge of all photographers, all editors. Um, that job is hiring, firing, uh, training, um, critiquing, um, rallying a lot of times when there's big breaking news situations that um, require a lot of people uh, and bodies to get to, you are, you know, kind of <laughs> on the phone trying to get people uh, in to, to work those extra hours. Um, but that was, that was what we were weighing um, in, in 2000, late 2016, 2017. Make the move up north, which... I would have loved because, um, you know, as much fun as I was having down there, you do miss home. D.C. is a lot closer. Um, being all the way down in Florida is, uh, you know, I saw my dad twice a year. Sometimes once. And with presented with those two options, we still, uh, at that point, were thinking we could be the big fish in the small pond. And so we stayed. Um, that same year, all, all sorts of responsibility started um, dropping into my lap. I became the chief photographer. 
uh, <laughs> April and I got married and uh, we bought a house and we got a dog uh, all within about three months. So uh, a lot of responsibility all of a sudden. And, you know, I'd like to circle back a little bit to the start of my career, how I was just a partying bartender that got a phone call from a news director. Um, one of the lessons I've learned in my career, and I hope, you know, through all my mumbling and uh, crap that I've said about here's, you know, one thing after another, I one lesson uh, that I would kind of throw out there that I've learned is that um, challenges are good. Responsibility is good. I think that a lot of people shy away from difficult things um, and, you know, they want less burden. Uh, they want it to be easier. But I can tell you that when I was young uh, and before I started the, the long career, long career might be relative, um, before I started all this, I didn't have a lot of self-esteem. I didn't have a lot of self-work. I wouldn't say I was looking at myself and being proud of anything. And so as my career starts, you know, having moments where I'm given more responsibility, I'm more stressed, sure. But at the same time, I'm also building um, sort of confidence and I'm put in situations where I'm talking in front of a bunch of people and I have to give presentations um, and I have to have hard conversations with people and I have to talk to managers <laughs> a lot more. Uh, and, and, you know, if there's things to be accountable for, you have to have those hard conversations. Um, all that for me was good. Um, those slow hurdles and you know milestones that came throughout the career are things that shaped me into a better person uh somebody that didn't want to just you know blow off work um i forgot to mention that you know one of the early lessons uh that i picked up from somebody else and I would say it probably helped contribute to the success. Um, ben Manning taught me, uh, he, he, he didn't call out work. Um, and I know there's a lot of flack I could catch for saying, you know, don't call out work. And there's people that are burnout and, um, there's definitely the case for you need to take vacation. I'm saying if you look at it differently, um, not calling out is something you do for yourself. Um, it's something that you take pride in as somebody that shows up, somebody that is reliable. And I just kind of modeled myself after him when he said, yeah, uh, they'll notice, you know, that they have to call somebody else in to replace you um, when when you call out. Um, so I just never call out because I don't want to burden somebody else. And I never found it that hard for my entire career at WTAJ. I never called out. And it was very, very, very rare for a lot of years uh, for me to call out. Um, once the baby came along, that, that kind of changed. Um, but if I could offer that as, uh, you know, a way to look at things differently is uh, there's probably a lot of people in TV news that don't uh, like who they work for. <laughs> Um, they probably don't respect them a whole lot. They're probably looking uh, for the next opportunity as quickly as possible. And so um, calling out is kind of this thing where it's like, well, screw them. Um, but if I could ask you to think of it differently, it's, you know, I don't call out uh, 
because I don't care about them. I call out because I care about who I am. It's not about, um, you know, tacking on a long weekend and feeling like I, I got an extra, you know, um, kind of vacation out of it. I didn't call out because it was who I am. Uh, I am somebody that shows up. Uh, I am somebody that people find to be reliable. Um, so there was my Ben Manning that, you know, went on for, for years and years, uh, that lesson that, that I, I picked up from him. Um, back to being uh, the boss. So the boss is in charge. Uh, same year, 2017 is when I took over as, as the boss, the hiring manager. Um, you know, we continued some of the most successful um, campaigns for win winning awards. And I got a lot of enjoyment out of being somebody that trained uh, people to to do this thing we do, to do this storytelling. Um, you know, some of my fondest memories and the things that I'll take away from that time as manager is having people in my office and showing them, um, you know, examples from the National Press Photographers Association, um, showing them my own examples, if I could hold them up and say, hey, uh, here's something I did. That's, um, if you're uh, a manager or a boss and, um, you know, you, one of the tactics that I use to motivate people is I, I always wanted them to, to see that I could do the job too. Um, you know, you, certain uh, promotions will lead you to delegating responsibility. Uh, that's, that's one of those buzzwords they throw out there is delegating responsibility. You don't want to be, uh, sh you know, all your time shouldn't be spent doing rank and file work. Um, but your rank and file better know that you could do what they do. Um, if they don't, think that you're capable of that, there goes the morale, there goes the respect of your troops. Um, so leading by example, um, if you're a manager out there, um, if you're responsible for hiring a team, if you're responsible for training people, um, I, if, if I, if you could call it success, uh, I would say leading by example in, in the work that you do is is something that uh, I would throw out there as a as a very very big tactic. Um, if somebody needs help or wants uh, inspiration or has a question about something, um, I was always somebody that I hope. Uh, would be able to draw from my own experience and say, here's what I did. Um, here's something to try. Did you ever think of, of this? Um, so that was, that was the good times. Um, and, you know, I don't want to say things took, took an ugly turn um, because I, I feel like a lot of the forces were inevitable and they had less to do with um, TV news than just where I was, where my wife was. Um, so when I started to think about leaving TV and, and ultimately moving back to Altoona, um, first thing was COVID uh, for sure. If you worked a job, if you, uh, were a manager or or a you know just an employee uh, that experience sucked and it especially sucked having to keep things together um keep keep people motivated keep people on task um try to you know there was the physical just restrictions of everything in covid um 
But there was also just watching the world kind of tear itself apart and asking, and what is what I'm doing like, how, it, it feels fragile. The world post COVID or during COVID especially, it felt like things weren't safe and things were fragile. Um, and that at any minute uh, there could be destruction. That's what, what it started to feel like to me. And so, you know, do I want to be thousands of miles away from, from my family in Altoona? Um, do I want to spend my days still kind of putting together um, content like this? Those are the sort of questions that start happening is, is, is what I'm doing really worth, um, you know, not seeing my dad anymore. Uh, my dad is, is getting to an age where I always kind of told myself, you know, I'm going to have to move back home eventually. And, um, you know, he's, he's not a, a spry young lad anymore. Um, and, you know, I, I, my wife and I got uh, pregnant in we had our kid in 2020. That was the second thing that really changed uh, my dedication to, to being a journalist, uh, my dedication to being in charge of people. Um, I found it harder. Um, not, not that there wasn't understanding, not that there wasn't patience, but um, I just felt like my desire to go through the same things um, that you have to do year in and year out. You know, you're covering the same events, you're giving people the same reviews, um, you're disciplining somebody. Um, and, and it's all things that, you know, when you step back and say, are we on the brink of like, you know, economic collapse? Are we gonna have a global meltdown? Um, do I really, really want to be doing this task I've done six years in a row? Um, that was, those were the things that I started to feel. Um, and especially when, when uh, Baby Rhythm ca came along, uh, those were more acutely felt. Um, so the last year, uh, it, it basically came down to I was I was pretty pretty certain um, you know that it was it was time to uh, kind of get out and do something new um, there was some negotiating but I I think you know even six months out from when I got out I was I was pretty much making up my mind um, that you know, e even if the number was great and, you know, the opportunity was there, um, I just, I, I kind of felt burnout of 13 years in TV uh, and the desire to get back towards family in Altoona, um, the weight of being a, a father certainly outweighed my desire to be um, in charge as a manager. So if you, uh, if you recall, if you're friends with me on Facebook, I, I kind of wrote, um, you know, my, my goodbye uh, on, on an article. I'll, uh, I'll attach it in the comments. And I called it kind of a, a midlife awakening. And, you know, I wouldn't call it a crisis. Uh, I don't feel bad. Uh, crisis implies, I, I just picture stress and, and buying a Porsche. Um, I'm still driving my Toyota. And, um, you know, my, my reasons for getting out were personal, um, but also there's, there's certainly, uh, if you ask anyone in TV, there is burnout. That's my career in summation, I guess. Um, you know, my thoughts are, are that now I'm, I've been 
uh, out in the world doing freelance work and I've kind of invented some new rules for for myself um, when I compare what I was doing before what I didn't want to do any longer um, you know you you want to say hey I'm not going to jump into the same situation uh, that made me feel like um, I was unsatisfied so you know, I, I kind of came up with some new rules for myself, things that I prioritize. Um, and I'll get into that in, in the next video because I think I've gone on long enough. Um, but, you know, I, the, the thought I, I, was, I was actually laying in bed last night and not to get, um, you know, too, too sent sentimental around Father's Day, um, but but you get to a certain age, I'm 37, and you start having that thought in your head is your parents are going to pass and you are on deck. And I think I started realizing that a lot more and it feels half over to me and I don't want to spend a lot of time. I don't want to be happy 10% of the time at work. I want to be happy 100% of the time. And that's kind of what uh, my new um, rules are for, for how I approach work now. And we'll get to that in the next video. If I don't see you, um, have a good Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, if I forgot to mention anyone that I've been blessed to work with so many people in TV that were influences, uh, patient, good leaders, and I've neglected to name drop all of you. Um, but some of you got tagged in here and mentioned. So, um, yeah, if I left you out, I, I apologize. <laughs>